In today's video, I want to give an update on the 10 gallon Hillstream tank. Here's a, a look at the tank about two weeks after the last video. You can see the shrimp are busy at work. Everybody's doing great. And the Cypress health fry is getting a little bit of hair algae, but that's no match for these Amano shrimp. You can see this one is kind of funny in the way that it's cleaning and the cypress helferi is bending under its weight. Nearite snails are doing good. There's been a lot of eggs since I have two females and one male, but I don't really mind. And here's a look at the hillstream loach. It has some wispy stuff at the edge of its fins, but this is normal and goes away on its own after a few days. Now let's see what the tank looks like in another two weeks. Today the tank's two months old, and I want to give a little video update. So the first thing I notice, the Cypress helferi has grown definitely a lot taller, but some of the older growth, I can see like the, the tips of the leaves, are looking a little bit yellow. Um, I started dosing potassium, but I think even after that, it continued to get worse. So I'm not sure. Uh, if anyone has any ideas about that, I'd be happy to hear. But everybody's doing well. Yeah, the plant's been growing a lot taller, and even this, these few sections have been growing. Yeah, I'm not sure if that stuff is algae. There was a little bit of hair algae, but these Amano shrimp took care of it right away. And you can see that's my biggest Amano shrimp cleaning, working on the uh, Cypress health fry. Yeah, all the fish are still going good. I have eight Celestial Pearl Daniels now. Um, my friend gave me another one that she found hiding in her tank. So, the total's eight. They're really cool fish. Each one of them is like really unique. I can tell them all apart. And um, the crypts have also grown a lot. You can see how big they are. And there's the pink flamingo crypts I have hiding back there. These ones in particular look really nice. They're losing their tissue culture leaves. Um, they're turning yellow and falling off. So I think that's probably a good thing as these new leaves are more adapt to their current growth conditions. And you can see in the reflection in the back, the big patch of crypts here, it's actually a little too dense for my liking. Uh, it's, yeah, but the, uh, the Celestial Pearl Danios seem to love that clump. The big ones have taken to hiding there. And that one that you see kind of in the middle, he usually likes to hide in that clump as well. I think that having territory, it seems to be the bigger, stronger ones that, that hide there. So having territory like that might be a mark of status or something in the Celestial Pearl Dania society. Because the, uh, the younger, smaller ones, they like to just stay out in the open water. Here's another angle to look at the crypt patch. If you look closely, you can see a few of the big celestial pearl dania swimming in there. So even though I don't necessarily like how dense it looks, I think that it is good for the fish. Also, we can see the Hillstream Loach is back there. Uh, oh, see, she's working on the glass right there. Hard to see. She seems to prefer hanging out on the, on the glass and the rocks now a little bit more than the wood. 
Before she would always hide in the wood, but now she's kind of m much more active. And yeah, likes, likes the glass. The Bucephalandra is doing really good too. You can see this clump here. And a little shrimp working it at the roots. They've attached themselves to the rocks. I don't know if you can see the roots down there. Yeah, it's really been really interesting to observe. So they kind of just send down these roots and then the roots just make this fuzzy stuff that when it senses the rock and attaches itself there. When you get the Bucephalandra from the tissue culture, it comes with, well, at least mine came with these really long roots. Those roots don't seem to be as effective though at holding the, actually holding the plant on. I think that once the roots grow, they can't really, um, you know, they, 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 they kind of don't have that suction. The suction power comes from the new roots. But also interesting, I had some roots here, you can see. Um, yeah, so that root that looks kind of split into three parts, that root actually broke. It was one of these old roots that broke. And then from the broken part came out three new like young roots that do seem to be capable of attaching so so yeah i've heard that when you get those plants when you get these rooted plants when you put them in your aquarium you should cut the roots then you don't get the roots floating up you know like have you ever tried to plant a plant and then all the roots are kind of sticking up out of the soil well you, if you cut the roots you won't get that and Looks like new root growth just comes straight out of those roots. I'm a little, I've been a little bit scared to do it, so I haven't really done it. I'm not advocating it, but just something to think about and to observe. The java fern's doing well. I'm gonna give this a top view. You can see a few interesting new growth points. So first, you can there's a few new leaves that are unfurling at the bottom. And java fern leaves kind of grow like, well, like a fern. They make little fiddleheads at the base on the rhizome and then they just kind of unfurl. So there's a really big leaf and a, two smaller leaves that are unfurled. The other interesting thing is this, the, um, this little plantlet. Plantlets grow on the tips and edges of the java fern leaves and this one's actually growing pretty big, big enough to take off and use as um, its own plant. And you can see the other tips are also growing plantlets, which, uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave them there. They don't really bug me too much. I'll just leave them there until they get big enough to either use or to give away to friends. The Anubias here uh, has gotten a few more leaves, maybe like two or three leaves for each plant. So it's been growing steadily. Dark green color. Uh, we've also been getting some algae on the rocks, which I think is a good thing because we have a lot of algae eaters in this tank, and you can see they've been algae eating. You can see the near it snail bite marks on the rock. Let me go back and give a full tank view. So, if you notice, the filter I have now is an AquaClear 30. I got it on sale at PetSmart for $20, which is, I think, a really great deal. Uh, so maybe if you need a filter, check out your PetSmart. Uh, the PetSmarts around me, their stuff is usually not very good, like their livestock and everything. I never buy that. But this uh, equipment was not, not too bad. The other filter, I just moved to a new tank, which I'm setting up now, which we can see in a future video. But the AquaClear 30 has a nice, powerful flow. Yeah, the fish sometimes seem to like playing in there. And it kind of makes the plants wave around. And um, I think it's actually a lot better for the kind of hill stream effect. I didn't realize how much weaker the Marina S10 is. 
Here's the tank as it looked one month ago in the last video. You can see that the crypts are just starting to grow their submerged leaves. They still have the scraggly tissue culture leaves and the cypress halfera is just barely peeking out from behind the log. There were a lot of changes after two weeks. Plants started growing, a few more animals were added, and the water just looks clearer and everything looks healthier. And here's how things look today. The plants are growing in and filling the space beautifully. A really rewarding part of the hobby is stepping back and watching things grow. It kind of reminds me of watercolor painting in a way. We don't have complete control, we just have to trust in the medium. By doing so, however, we can get results that are more natural, more beautiful than anything we could have thought of by ourselves. Until next time, take care.